many executive orders recently signed by the president continues to stir heated debate along the Texas-Mexico border. And that's where we begin tonight, right along the border, during a week of coverage from there to share with all of us what it means here. Our Ken Molestina is live tonight in the Rio Grande Valley where Border Patrol agents simply can't keep up, they say. Ken? Well, yeah, Doug and Kaylee, we thought to start here in the Rio Grande Valley because this region of border in the last couple of years has become the most illegally crossed sector in the entire country. So, as you would imagine, talk of a border wall here along these parts is something that is top of mind with almost anyone you speak with. This stretch of border with Mexico runs a little more than 300 miles long. Like you can see these little trails coming out here. Chris Cabrera is vice president of the union that represents border agents in the Rio Grande Valley. And when it comes to talk of a border wall coming here, he'll tell you. I'm 100% in favor of it. It makes my job uh, more manageable. He says every day, five to 700 immigrants cross into the U.S. illegally through here, despite there already being some fencing up in the area. So just as we were driving by, we got word that Border Patrol agents picked up a group of about five immigrants that just crossed over the border. You can see them right there, the group of five, including women and small children. They will now be taken to a processing center nearby. Many of the undocumented immigrants who were caught, processed, and given temporary permission to stay end up here at the humanitarian respite center run by the Catholic Charities of the Rio Grande Valley. Here, they're given some clean clothes, a meal, and a bus ticket to their final destination in the States. It was also here that we met Reina Alvarez and her seven-year-old daughter, Wendy, who just crossed over from Guatemala. ¿Y por qué decidió usted venir para acá? Why did you decide to come here? La delincuencia en mi país. Gang violence and fear of being murdered force her to leave Guatemala. She says she knows some undocumented immigrants do come to the U.S. for nefarious reasons. But as she battled back tears... Por eso nos she said they shouldn't all be painted with the same brush. I think that we, we need to help the, whatever is causing the families to come to begin with. Sister Norma Pimentel runs the Catholic Charities in the Rio Grande Valley. She opposes the border wall, saying it'll do little to deter those coming here to save their own lives. I don't see it as bringing any solution. But from a law enforcement perspective, Cabrera says it's essential to stopping people who cross illegally and many times end up in North Texas. That's one of the first questions we ask them is, where are you headed? And they tell us, we're headed to Dallas, we're headed to Arlington, we're headed, headed to McKinney. They, they, they come out by name and tell us these places. And Cabrera told us that many of these immigrants, they favor North Texas because they feel that there are sanctuary cities there that will protect them and that they'll run a much smaller risk of being deported. Doug, Kaylee? Ken, you mentioned some of the people in your story here received a temporary stay. Can you give us a little deeper explanation on that? What does that mean? Yeah, so what happens with some folks is that uh, they are processed here. They're given a court date, and, uh, the, and they have an ankle monitor that's put uh, on their leg, and then they're sent on their way. Uh, and sometimes they have to appear before a judge. Sometimes it takes a month. Sometimes it takes two. Uh, it's, and then once they do, that process can take up to several years uh, as their entire deportation process goes through the courts. Uh, system out here. So that's what they do. Instead of uh, keeping them jailed and keeping them housed uh, in detention centers, uh, they do confirm that they have families that they're trying to reunite with here in the United States. So they'll give them a temporary stay and a court date, put that ankle monitor on them and send them on their way, Doug.